In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom motion trail rig, which you can use to get effects like this, and this, or this, or this. Crucially, there's no fiddly layer sequencing or splitting your footage into still frames. Just drop your footage into a pre-comp and play around with the settings to get the result that you want. Wow! Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shot. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use this clip, but you can use any footage you like to follow along, as long as you've either keyed it out, rotoscoped it, or done a junk mat like this. We'll be adding quite a few expressions along the way, so if you're not familiar with them, I've included them in the description below, so you can copy and paste them. To save time, I'm not going to be reading them out during the tutorial, just highlighting them and explaining what they do. At the end, I'll show you how I created this animation, and there's a link for the free project file below, but I'll also be exploring other styles using this technique in future videos. And you'll also find full workflow videos for this rig on the video shop long play. Okay, let's get started. We've got a new project here with my standard folder structure. It's pretty intuitive, so don't worry if this is your first tutorial with me. A new comp, standard HD, 24 frames a second is fine. Just check in that that's classic 3D. And we're going to name this motion trail. Pop it in the final folder. Going to import a couple of clips that we're going to have a look at for this tutorial. And this Roto Dance can see it's 30 frames a second so we're just going to conform to 24 and then skateboarding is 24 frames a second that's fine going to duplicate our main comp and pop it in pre-comps i'm going to call this insert footage here 01 keeping this nice and idiot proof what we may do is duplicate this so when you're creating your own thing it's easy to drop in different bits of footage and see what works so we've got some really badly rotoscoped breakdance footage here. This isn't a rotoscoping lesson, so I do not care. Don't you even care? I'm going to drag that comp into our main comp. Just turn off the audio. Then time remap it. And then just put a hold keyframe. I'm going to rename that footage, comma, space, 01. So that comma and then the space and the number is important, as you'll see in a second. The footage you can call it anything before the comma for what we're going to do here if you're new to expressions i definitely recommend checking out this tutorial first as i talk about the expression that we're going to be looking at which is going to feature heavily in a lot of the animation that you're going to see we're going to add a slider control to this and then add this expression to the slider so this is the expression that i talk about in that tutorial this layer.name.split and if you watch that you'll know that the the one here refers to the number after the comma so that's going to make it nice and easy when we set up all the expressions and controls on this layer and then we can just duplicate it each subsequent layer will have a different number and we can spread them out in x space and various other stuff i'm going to rename that slider control x so you can see here it's outputting a value of one so now when we duplicate that it'll be two three four and so on and so forth but we'll get to that so I'm going to add a null and then rename it control. So if you've watched any of my tutorials, this is pretty much what I do for every single project. Have a control null and then it's easy to control things because you've got that top null layer with various expression controls and sliders and whatever, or colors. I'm going to add a slider control to that. And we're going to name this time space hyphen space start and then duplicate that. And this one will name difference. These are going to control the timing on all of our layers. So now we're going to take this expression and apply it to our time remapping of the layer. So the TD is looking at the time difference over here. The X is our layer value, if you will. So in this case, it's one. But then, you know, when we've got, say, 100 layers on the 100th layer, X will equal 100. TS is the time start. At the moment, it's starting at zero. So this bit of footage will be starting at the very beginning. Then this last line, we've just got time start plus whatever time difference we want multiplied by X, which is the layer value. So if we don't have any time difference, every copy of our footage will just be at frame zero. But actually not frame zero because we've got footage comma 01, but we'll fix that in a second. So to make it easier to see what's going on, let's add a visible time code into this comp. So create a new solid, add the time code effect. 
So uncheck composite on original and we'll just change this to frames. And toggle transparency here, just drag this over. Uh, don't want all those zeros, so let's just trim that. The linear white. TC for time code, and we'll just lock that. Okay, so just to check that this is this is working, let's adjust our time difference. Now I'm going to add a value of 0.1, so this immediately jumps to the second frame, and then our duplicates. We've got frame seven, frame nine, frame sixteen. So we know it's working. But now footage 11 is on frame 26. Okay, so if we want our first layer to start at frame zero, we can just duplicate any layer and rename it comma zero zero. Okay, so that's starting at frame zero. But if we want it, say every subsequent layer to be a frame, we need to go into our time difference and do one second divided by 24 frames. And that is what our time difference needs to be. So now this is frame 11. I'm going to delete all those because we've got a few more things to add. Okay, P for position. Make this a 3D layer and right click and separate dimensions. We want to expression control how they spread out on the X axis. So I'm going to duplicate this slider control and call it X spread. Give it a value of 10 for now. And then we're going to add this expression to the X position. Spread equals, then it's looking at that X spread control that we just created. X equals, and that's our layer number, given by our uh, layer name split expression. Then finally, value plus spread times that X value. Nothing sexier than reading out expressions. Must drop down a few for my next first day. Last week I had to use the words rectal and moisture in the same well, sentence. first dates can be awkward. So now to check that it works. Uh, okay, so we need to set everything up with a comp that's comma O1 because then when you duplicate it, you get O2, O3. Doesn't matter, they're still numbers, but I'm kind of anal, so anyway. We've got comma O1, O2, O3, O4. Press P for position, and now you can see these red numbers, expression controlled. And if we just bump that value up a bit. Okay, so they're spreading out 100 pixels each on the X. And because the expression's value plus, you can still move them around. So that's good. So we want to set up a similar thing on the Z position. So let's add a camera. Standard camera is fine. We can tweak the settings later on, depending on what we want. I'm going to duplicate the X spread control and just call it Z spread, which is not catchy. Z spread, if you're American. And we can just copy the expression only and then paste that onto the Z position. And then all we need to do is go into that expression, change that X to a Z. And let's just check that that's working. So we'll set the Z spread to 200. Then we'll duplicate that a bunch of times. And then just check our top view here. Zoom in. And if we set this to zero, we're lining up. And then if we bump this up to 300, yeah. Okay, so they're working. We'll put this back to zero for now. And again, delete those. Still more to add. So next I'm going to add a layer count expression. Now we may not even use this, but it's something that's handy to have. You may develop this rig and add some fancier or more elegant expression controls than what I'm going to show you. But uh, I think it's just good to have something that counts the total number of layers that you've got. And then you can work that value into expressions. So we'll just pop it on. And if we don't end up using it, it's fine. So we'll go to our control null again. 
and just duplicate that slider and we'll call this lay account. And then we're going to add this expression. So now when we enter that, it gives us a value of one. And if we just duplicate this layer, it's gone up to three. So it's counted the number of footage layers. Just delete those again. Because we could end up with hundreds of layers once this is all set up, what I want to be able to do is easily turn them on or off without actually having to manually keyframe the opacity value. What the hell are you talking about? It'll make sense in a second. Okay, so we're going to duplicate that Z spread controller and then we're going to call these layers start and layers end. And then we're going to add this expression to the opacity. This is looking at the layers end value and depending on what we have set for that, it's either going to be on or off depending on what number this layer is. So we set that to be four, it's going to be on because this is layer O1. But if we duplicate it a whole bunch of times, layer five is off, whereas the other ones are on because we're ending at O4. Now, if we set the layers start to two, we don't have anything driving that at the moment. We're going to add to transform control. It's up footage O1 and that's got an opacity value there. And we can add a similar expression to that. So similar to the expression on the main opacity, this last line is saying if X, which is our layer number, is greater than or equal to Y, which is our layer start value, output a value of 100, otherwise zero. There's probably a way of bundling everything into the same expression on the opacity, but I'm not clever enough to know what it is. But just for the sake of getting it done, this is the way that I've done it. So let's just check that both of those expressions work. So I'm going to copy and paste that transform effect to the other layers. And just spread these out. So we've got layers two, three, and four visible because it starts and starts at two, ends at four. We set that to three instead. We've only got three and four. And if we set that to three, only three is visible. So that's working. And that's it for creating the rig itself. You've never got something you can amend or customize to create effects like these. In a second, I'll walk you through how I created this. But before I do, a reminder that all the expressions we've looked at here are in the description below for you to copy and paste if you need to. You got it. I'll explore this skateboard animation in my next tutorial, specifically how you can create a procedural ripped paper collage style where all you need to do is drop in your rotoscope footage. But just to show how easy the rig is, the animation itself here is just six keyframes. Then there's a slight push in with the camera, but that's simple to do. In fact, the whole thing is simple, which is the point of the rig. Okay, onto this. The basketball clip I chose is hilariously unkinetic. The guy is very nonchalantly dropping the ball in the net, so it doesn't really lend itself to out there, outrageous, in your face, dynamic motion design flourishes. Try setting that five times. <laughs> so that's something to bear in mind when you're using your rig. Choose footage which works with this effect. I got this footage from Pexels. By the way, I'm not slacking off the footage, just what I chose to animate. Anyway, I'm not going to do this step by step. The world doesn't need another tutorial on how to do stretchy text. Instead, I've got the free Gumroy project open here and I'll walk you through it. And there's always the full workflow video if you need to refer to that. Let's ignore this master comp for now and we'll look at this pre-comp here, which is essentially our easy cutout motion trail rig. Copyright the video shop 2023. I'll solo these layers, which are the cutout footage of the basketballer. To keep the amount of work to a minimum, all I did was do a very rough junk mat every other frame over the course of about half a second. This comp is called insert footage here 05 because I was working on all these different animations in the same project, seeing what worked and what didn't. This one didn't. But this is what I mean. All you need to do is either take your green screen footage or footage where you're using the roto brush or do a junk bat like I've done here. And then you can just drop it into this comp and then everything is set up with the rig. If we look at the control now, there's some extra controls for a drop shadow, but I decided not to use that anyway. But if you animate something with a different aesthetic, you can just set up all your expression controls on one layer. Then when you know it's working, you just duplicate that layer. I showed you that before anyway. So the keyframes for this animation are here. I've keyframed the time start, and you'll notice it matches exactly the time in seconds. So what that means is these layers don't appear still, they're moving. The layer's end is animated from one to five, 
so they stagger on. The time difference is set to 0.04 something, which as we know from earlier is 1 divided by 24. So each iteration is one frame along. If this was set to zero, it would all be the same frame fanning out. You'll notice I haven't animated the layer start, yet they all disappear. Well, that's because this comp only has half a second of content. So they disappear all by themselves and we don't need to keyframe it. And finally, some small movement on the X spread so that they spread out a bit as they stagger on and off. And that's it for the footage animation. We've got our master footage here at the bottom and I did a little bit of motion tracking on the backboard. These animated arrows are parented to a null with that tracking data, so they follow the basket. I've got some hold keyframes on the scale, just to give them a stuttery feel. These text layers are a mix of path animation to create a stretch effect. Again, you probably already know how to do that. If not, there's a billion tutorials. And this is a live text layer using text animators to get this stretch effect. Quick plug, if you'll let me. I look at text animators in much more detail in this tutorial, if that's of interest. I've got a luma mat on the text layers, which links to this asphalt texture. I say asphalt, whatever that is. This is a little touch, probably not even noticeable, but to make it look like the text goes behind the backboard glass when it animates off, I've quickly masked off the backboard and then used a set mat effect with blur on these two text layers. Lastly, I have pre comped all this and tie remapped it just to slow it down for this bit. What's the point in spending loads of time doing some nice kinetic type animation and then masking stuff out, etc., if we pretty much blink and miss it? I think it's always worth looking at your animation and seeing if you can fine tune any timing so that the focus is on the interesting stuff. But this does cause a problem. So the masking's now screwed up. That's because the time remapping is showing frames between the keyframes in our pre comps and comps within comps. To avoid this, I have pre-rendered the sequence, so that's not possible. If you download the Gumroad project, I actually haven't done that, so you'll just need to do this step. Render this comp, and import it, and then alt-replace the pre-comp here. And that fixes it. If there wasn't this posterized time effect, I wouldn't recommend it, as you'll get duplicated frames. But for the effect that we're going for, you can get away with it. Finally, there's this texture, which is the texture of an actual basketball. I know, it's a bit on the nose, whatever. And then we've got some moving paper. And finally, a posterized time adjustment layer, which I've keyframed. You can only do hold keyframes on this effect unless you link it to a slider, but here I didn't bother. We go from 20 frames to 16 to 12, and then back again. This rig doesn't have to be just for footage. If you've watched this tutorial that I mentioned earlier, you'll have noticed this rig is essentially the same as I've used here for this kinetic type animation. I'm personally looking forward to exploring different footage from text animations using this setup, because this rig isn't about having a particular technique or aesthetic. It's about having a setup you can reuse for all sorts of different projects. I hope that's what you do, and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.